Arab Barghouti is a Palestinian activist and commentator, and as I mentioned before this short break, is the son of Marwan Barghouti, Palestine's national, uh, Nelson Mandela. Arab Barghouti, welcome back uh, to the mother of all talk shows. Another Eid, that's two Eids, uh, under remorseless, savage, Bombardment, 75,000 tons of high explosive has been dropped on Gaza, a cage from which there is no escape, the equivalent of at least three atomic bombs dropped on a population with no means of defending themselves. The last deed was celebrated, if that's the word, under shot and shell, and so is this one, isn't it? Yeah, thank you so much for having me again. I think that what what you said uh, uh, basically uh, tells the whole story. I think that we are witnessing one of the worst atrocities uh, in front of our eyes, and it's being taped and uh, uh, live streamed on uh, on every social media. And I think that we got to a point where it's very obvious and very clear uh, the international community's complicity in in what's happening, because. If, if they wanted to to take responsibility and uh, uh, to minimize the suffering of human beings of civilians in in the Gaza Strip they would have done a, a better uh, job at uh, pressuring the Israelis it's very obvious that the Israelis have a blank check uh, by every major Western government to continue uh, with with what they're doing under the excuse that we want to eliminate Hamas, uh, and we all know that the actual and real uh, uh, motive behind why Netanyahu is not stopping this is that it's very obvious that they have a, a plan to ethnically cleanse the Palestinian people. Because if you look at uh, uh, historical Palestine, you're going to find uh, that there are 7 million uh, J- uh, Jewish Israelis and 7 million Palestinian uh, Arabs. And I think that uh, after all the uh, uh, ethnic cleansing and killing and imprisoning uh, uh, thousands and thousands of Palestinian people over 76 years. The fact that we're still 50% of this land, if not a little bit more, is uh, driving the racist Israeli government crazy. And this is why they found that the only uh, answer for this uh, problem, Palestinian problem, is to ethnically cleanse the Palestinian people after, uh, uh, you know, attempting to genocide uh, the Gaza population and then opening the borders and maybe a bunch of people will uh, will leave. Now, uh, this is an interesting dichotomy because the media, when they report what's happening at all, and I'm sorry to tell you, There's less and less news on the so-called mainstream media about this. Most uh, people in Britain probably think there's already a ceasefire uh, in the the conflict. Uh, But the dichotomy uh, is this. Some try to suggest, some of the smarter papers, that the Western governments are not happy with Netanyahu, that Biden is frequently furious with him and frequently threatening him and so on but Netanyahu goes his own way regardless. And others, like yourself, uh, believe that there's no conflict between these Western leaders and the Israeli government, that that's all for show. Uh, Kindly make your argument why it's the latter. I think it's very obvious that, of course, there is some pressure, but the pressure is not for the right reasons. The pressure is because uh, Biden is uh, is obviously seeing the fact that he's losing the elections because of his uh, position uh, in in this uh, genocide. And I think that if if you look at other uh, European countries, the only pressure that they put is that when they feel that. Uh, uh, something is going to impact them or affect them uh, on on either the country level or on the personal level. And that's the scene of politicians in the West that we're uh, uh, getting uh, to know more and more. I think that 
if if you really wanted to stop a genocide, you have all the tools to do it. You are the one who's uh, uh, like the American government is the one who's giving them all the money. They're giving them all the weapons. They're giving them all the support. And then they criminalize uh, the BDS movement, which tells you exactly uh, uh, who's controlling uh, what's happening in in American politics. But to be honest, George, I wanna I wanna also highlight something, which is the fact that everybody is talking about Netanyahu as if he's the only problem in the Israeli uh, uh, politics and uh, Israeli society. Netanyahu is is a really, really uh, uh, bad and uh, a criminal uh, uh, leader, and we all know that. He's uh, uh, made uh, clear genocidal uh, statements. But at the same time, I think that this is a representation of what the Israeli society is becoming. And if you look at Ben Gvir and Smotrich and all these maniacs who are taking decisions and uh, uh, being in in, uh, places of power in Israel, how they think and their statements and it's all the the israeli uh, most of the israeli politicians are supportive of uh, this uh, genocide and they're also arming the the settlers in the west bank i'm sure you you're hearing about the settler terrorism that is at its peakest uh, uh, since the uh, establishment of the Israeli uh, state on the Palestinian land. And they are uh, uh, doing raids in uh, in the West Bank, in refugee camps. Last night they were in Ramallah here, uh, in Tul Karim and Janine all the time. They go to refugee camps, they kill people. 550 people have been killed in the West Bank since October the 7th. So I, I think this proves that Hamas is is just an excuse that they use to ethnically cleanse the Palestinian people. The other pressure uh, on Israel, uh, apart from the mass movement on the streets, astounding photographs from the air just this evening of the demonstrations going on there, uh, is the uh, military losses which they are suffering in Gaza, indicating given that they haven't released the vast majority of their hostages, they plainly haven't defeated the Palestinian resistance because this weekend, uh, I think they have lost at least 15 soldiers dead and on the normal ratio of three wounded to uh, dead. Uh, the, the Israeli society, historically at least, has not been able to put up with that level of casualty. So the resistance is still taking a big toll, isn't it? It is, and I think it's. This is just another proof of of uh, the fact that Netanyahu is is uh, continuing with this war, and this genocide on the expense of not only the Palestinian people but also the Israelis. I think that any uh, uh, Israeli politician in their right mind, if they look at the long run, like Ishaq Rabin realized in the early 90s, that this this what they call conflict. Um, uh, will never be solved by uh, military solutions. It will only be solved by uh, political solutions. And I think that the Palestinian people have been ready and and uh, screaming uh, for a two-state solution, which is by itself, as you know, is a, a huge compromise by the Palestinian people because our land has been colonized, has been stolen. We will never change these facts. But the solution, we have to compromise because we want to move on. We want to establish our own state. We want our own independence. And I think that it's very important to re- uh, remember that the West Bank, Jerusalem and Gaza are part of the uh, Palestinian state that we're talking about. And um, uh, uh, the, the cost that is being paid, of course, on the Palestinian side is way higher and way steeper. But also Israelis will be paying for a very long time for this genocide, because I don't think that in anyone's memory, uh, we will uh, uh, forget this uh, this uh, genocide for uh, generations to come, not only in the uh, Middle East and in the region, but all over the world. And uh, the, the Israelis and, uh, uh, you know, their government will only be remembered by their crimes and by, by the, their killing. And I think that Netanyahu is the one who's responsible for that. Now, I supported the Oslo Agreement because, as you know, I was close to President Arafat. He persuaded me uh, that it was the best that could be achieved. But it's a complete failure, isn't it? I mean, you talk still about a Palestinian state, but where? Uh, The West Bank is now uh, 
um, completely populated, paved over, concreted by almost a million uh, settlers since the Oslo Agreement. Gaza is completely destroyed, uh, will never be contiguous uh, with the West Bank. Jerusalem has been, it's a, an awful word, I don't like to use it, but it has been Judaized. Uh, the people in Jerusalem have been uh, ethnically cleansed out of it, and new settlers uh, inserted in their place. Even the Greek uh, patriarch here having their uh, their property is stolen. Uh, the Christians are being pushed out of uh, Jerusalem. Where would this Palestinian state go if there was a two-state solution? I mean, the only viable and realistic uh, uh, for, form of, of the Palestinian state will be on the 67 borders. And the 67 borders means that uh, the Palestinian state will be established on the West Bank, uh, Gaza, and uh, East Jerusalem. And I think that not only the Palestinian people, but also Hamas itself and the leaders of Hamas have shown uh, uh, openness towards this solution. I think that it's very obvious and very clear. And anyone who disagrees with that, I think it's just blind or or uh, uh, lies. Uh, the fact that Netanyahu is the only is the biggest obstacle for the two state solution, and I think that uh, uh, you know we're we're Palestinian. We have pride. We will never uh, give up on uh, on our land, on our rights. And to be honest with you personally, if if you go and talk to the young people, I think that of course they despise. Uh, uh, the Oslo Accords, they, they do think right, rightfully so that it was a huge failure. And I think that even though my father happens to be one of the people who worked for the uh, Oslo to, to succeed and to happen, and he also met with uh, Israelis to, to maintain the peace process. But of course, he realized, like many other Palestinians, uh, after Netanyahu came uh, to power in the 96, that this is going to disappear as as a hope but uh, uh, to go back to it to be honest personally i i care about equality and freedom and living in dignity for the palestinian people i don't care about the format anymore if we're talking about one state two state ten states i really don't care anymore all i care about is that we palestinians live in uh, freedom and with dignity in our own uh, uh, native land. And I think this this right, uh, as my father said, we're not an exception. We're, li we're like any other nation. We deserve to live in, in freedom and independence. And I think we're going to get there. Uh, if we go to uh, uh, look at the details of what's happening in the West Bank and Gaza, we're, we're never going to see uh, a day with uh, with the Palestinian state. But if you look at South Africa, at Ireland, at Algeria, it, it happened out of a sudden. And I think this is the start of a new phase where Palestinians, we, we will have our own state as soon as possible. Arab Barghouti, thank you for joining us. Much obliged to you, Arab Barghouti, Palestinian activist and commentator and an all-round eloquent young man.